my Lord and my God. With these original words of St. Thomas the Apostle on recognizing that it's you, Jesus, I too firmly believe that you are here, as St. Thomas too believed on seeing you alive, though I don't see you as you are. But I know that you see me and you hear me. Together with him and the rest of the apostles, I adore you with most profound reverence, my God. I beseech your pardon for my sins and grace, so that these ten minutes with you today, the Sunday of Divine Mercy, may be fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, and also Mother of Mercy, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, please intercede for me. Shortly before preaching this meditation, I took advantage to go for confession. You may ask why. But the answer is obvious. I needed to. Yes, as a priest, I too need confession. The Pope needs it. After all, he has been seen, frequently, going himself to another priest for confession. You agree with me that you need it. Everyone needs it. Yet a further reason for my deciding this time around to go for confession has been that desire to share in the experience of the apostles on a day like today after your resurrection Jesus as in the gospel according to Saint John in his chapter 20 and I read on the evening of that day the first day of the week the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews Jesus came and stood among them and said to them peace be with you so do you enter Jesus with this greeting, Peace be with you. Let's step back a bit. The last meeting of the apostles with Jesus was at the Last Supper. They had abandoned our Lord in his suffering, betraying him, denying him, leaving him desolate. Only St. John tried to be close, though that amounted to little. Just imagine the guilt that we are suffering from coupled with their fear for the persecutors of Jesus. But deeply, I, like them, missed you. I miss you, Lord, when I sin. Where are you, that I may reconcile myself with you again? You and I, listening, remain insecure always when we are in sin. In fact, amongst the apostles, we find ourselves there being on guard, taking turns to guard the door, lest the enemy is breaking. There have been many rumors about the missing body of Jesus. We are suspecting that they've stolen it. We are uncertain of what's actually going on. Or could he also be, as a father of the church commenting on this situation of the apostles, St. John Chrysostom said, The disciples, when they heard what Mary Magdalene told them, were obliged either to disbelieve, or, if they believed, to grieve that he did not count them worthy to have the sight of him. He did not let them, however, pass a whole day in such reflections, but in the midst of their longing, trembling desires to see him, presented himself to them the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. And behold, Jesus appears in our midst instantly with, Peace be with you. There is this gift that you give Jesus, that of recognizing you, the awareness of your presence, always in my life. Keep granting me this gift. And you still go ahead as if to reassure them that it's you, to show them your wounds, the holes in your hand, your open sight. As I draw closer, first hesitating, a bit concerned about the infections on those wounds. But you say again to me, peace be with you. And you keep on wishing me peace. Then I come, inserting my finger in the hole made by the nails, and looking for the flap of flesh on your wounded side. Well, Jesus, you pardon my childishness. I embrace you, and I feel the warmth of your embrace, your forgiveness. What haven't you suffered for me? Then I hear you say, As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And breathing upon me, upon us, you say, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. 
I never believe you will come back to me after illustrating you as I did with my sin. Now it makes sense. You wanted me to experience so deeply your mercy that I may be converted into a missionary of your divine mercy. And so with this gesture and words, Jesus, today you institute the sacrament of reconciliation on your return from the dead. Remember that I need it. The Pope needs confession. Everyone needs it. And you listening need it too. Easter is a suitable time to return. Even the church commands her members to go for confession at least once a year, especially during Easter. It's time for reconciliation. I don't know for you, but I recall the first time I ever saw the full movie, an adaptation of Victor Hugo's book, Les Miserables. The protagonist, Jean Valjean, had been wrongly imprisoned for most of his life and consequently does not trust or love anyone. But then he chances upon Bishop Muriel. The good bishop gives him food, shelter, and humane treatment for the first time in 17 years. Valjean does not know how to respond to such love, so he does the logical thing. He steals the bishop's silver and runs away. He barely makes it out of town before he is caught by the police and dragged back to the bishop's house to be punished. However, the bishop surprises everyone by not only defending Valjean, but berating him for not stealing his silver candlesticks. Wow. One can only assume that he followed this statement with one of those penetrating priest stirs that just dares you to sin again. This incident changes Valjean's life. He could have simply taken the silver and continued with his bitter life. But the bishop's fatherly love causes a deep change in Valjean. He commits his life to God and tries to be the best version of himself. So he will go on to sing about the bishop's forgiveness. I feel my shame inside me like a knife. He told me that I have a soul. How does he know? What spirit comes to move my life? Is there any other way to go? I read from an article someone wrote also relating this story which I loved so much and had an impact on me on the possibility of mercy, of forgiveness, which we all need and which so many people need from us. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven, says Jesus to the eight, all of us. I believe in the forgiveness of sins, as we say in the creed, yet among us are some who do not believe in mercy, in tender mercy, in tender love, forgiveness, just as Jesus Christ himself is sign of contradiction. And we find in this same gospel of today, St. Thomas doubting that you returned to life and that you met the other apostles. They had told him that he saw you and he said that condition, unless I see in his hands the prints of the nails and place my finger in the mark of the nails and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Typical of the doubter. I realize that St. Thomas was actually demanding the fingerprints of Jesus, the risen Jesus, <laughs> just like a detective trying to, to catch a criminal. Even though back then the system of detecting fingerprints was non-existent. Likewise, some people continue asking for proofs for truths of the faith, demanding systems of verification that are beyond this world. And the result usually is that the same person fails to accept the simple proofs before him and remains an unbeliever. Let us pray for all those who don't believe. Oh Jesus, help me. May I know how to find you in the ordinary means you've left us. The sacraments, prayer, spiritual guidance, and so on. More remarkable, in fact, in this gospel is the attitude of the other disciples who, well, facing this challenge thrown by St. Thomas in believing the resurrection of our Lord, avoided picking quarrels with him. They had also learned to extend mercy to the others. They had experienced a change of heart, accommodating him, for days. And in your infinite mercy, Jesus, you return eight days later, again unannounced. His disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. At this moment, one could sense the double joy for the other disciples and the astonishment of St. Thomas. In fact, St. John goes on to say that Jesus calls Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. And put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, 
but believing. And Thomas answered, My Lord and my God, just as we started. And Jesus ends with his final advice. Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. The devotion to the divine mercy spread, especially among the faithful, who many parts of the world gather around three o'clock to say the litany of divine mercy, the noted time of our Lord's death by crucifixion, and the beginning, so to say, of the evening time when our Lord appears, reconciling himself with the disciples. If you, Jesus, have come this far to reconcile with me, presenting your wounds, I accept your mercy, presenting my own wounds to you. In that message of Pope Francis last Sunday, the Urbi et Orbi message, he was saying, as we contemplate the glorious wounds, our incredulous eyes open wide, our hardened hearts break open, and we welcome the Easter message. Peace be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us allow the peace of Christ to enter our lives, our homes, our countries. I ask you, Mother of Mercy, help me to realize how merciful Jesus has been to me, to turn into a missionary of mercy, to bring a lot of people to your son who is willing to reconcile himself always.